Shalom, shalom, Mishpoka of Yahweh. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Yahweh and Yahshua Speak television show. We are broadcasting from uh, Yahweh and Yahshua's temple. This is the Hebrew husband and wife ministry. And uh, we are going to start a new sermon today. Hallelujah. Entitled, A Programmed Gentile Mind. A programmed Gentile mind. Let's start out in Galatians, the fourth chapter. A programmed Gentile mind. What is that? Go into Galatians, the fourth chapter. A programmed Gentile mind thinks it is normal for Yahweh to have no effect on and not be involved in their lives. Mm. A programmed Gentile mind thinks it's normal. But Yahweh would have no effect on mm. them and have no effect in their lives, not be no, part of their lives. Is, so we can know. Galatians, the fourth chapter, and um, we want to read verse 3. Galatians, yeah. chapter 4, and verse 3. Read. Galatians, chapter 4, and verse 3. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Uh huh. All right, it says so. Even so, we. So this is yep. where we came from. All right, got right, bro. Right. Tell her this is how we used to be. All right. Not how you're supposed to be now. You you, you may not be exactly uh, where uh, Yahweh wants you to be, right. but at least you started. Yes. It says even so, we. That's some of you and me, whoever's reading know. this. When we were banned, when we were children. Uh -huh. were in slavery under the elements of the world. Yep, yep. So we were we were we were, we were in prison. And yep. we didn't know it. We thought a certain way cuz we had been programmed uh -huh. by the society that we're in and we actually thought we were doing all right. Yes, we did. So let's see what these these two in this this English word in bondage is. Um, in the uh, concordance. So, so, so let's see. That this is where Yahweh tells us he let us out of prison. So let's yeah. see. What, what do you mean we were in prison? None of us have actually been in, what's that place over on Roosevelt? Um, the name of the prison here in Illinois. Uh, 26th County. Oh, is it 26th Cook County. Jail. Cook County Jail. Right. All right. So, so we may not have been in Cook County Jail. But uh, Yahweh is saying we, we were in prison. Yes, we were we were mentally. Okay, so let's see what it is in the concordance. Okay. The two English word bondage is is the Greek word found as Strong's Blue Letter Bible number 1402. Vine's expository dictionary of the New Testament words defines in bondage signifying to make a slave of. Yeah, yeah. As with the purchased slave, there were no limitations either in the kind or the time of service. So the life of the believer is to be lived in continuous obedience to Elohim. To yes. God. All right. And so now yes. it says this being in bondage, how we used to be to the under, under the elements of the world. Uh -huh. Whatever the world's rules and regulations were. Right, right. It says, as with the purchased slave. Now, for those of us whose parents were brought to this country uh -huh. in slavery, right, right, we, we understood right that when, when Master said, get up, huh. the slave had to get up and go to the field and work there as long as the Master said. Right. You know, you go to your secular job, now you may get a, what is it, a break and then a lunch right. break and all that. Right. Slaves didn't get any no. of that. Work not all right, so, so he said there was no limitation in the kind or the time of the service of a slave. Yep. So being under the bondage or in slavery to the world uh -huh. meant whatever came into your ears or to your eyes had an effect on you. Yes, it did. Because you didn't understand that you were in slavery, you were in prison. Yep. And it was programming you to think that that was normal. Uh -huh. There's some people who won't even go out, go out of their house now because they think stuff is going to happen to them. Mm. That's, that's a result of the programming. So a Gentile mind is enslaved by the world yeah, yeah. and a servant of the world, but they don't know it. Go to Isaiah, the fifth chapter. 
Felt like it is, bro, so we can know. So you and I used to have a Gentile used mind to. because we were programmed by the Gentiles. Uh -huh. And now a Gentile is not limited to a racial group. No, it's not. A Gentile is whoever does not know Yahweh or live by what Yahweh said in the Bible. That's it. That's what a Gentile is. Yahweh also calls Gentiles heathen. Right. So Gentiles are people that live their life without Yahweh and not interested in what Yahweh said because they think Yahweh is unrelated right, to right. their lives. <clears throat> and they can't fit him in. Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Isaiah chapter 5, we want to read verses 20 to 23. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 5. Praise on. And verses 20 to 23 reads. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that called evil good and good evil. Uh -huh. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now here's Yahweh talking about how you used to to be. Right, right. <clears throat> and it's talking about the society that you live in now, how right. they still are without Yahweh. And now, Yahweh forbid, you know Yahweh and you still like your society. Huh. It says, but woe unto them. <clears throat> A wonderful, wonderful evil coming upon them huh. at woe that Karato called evil good and Torah call good evil. Right, right. Something wrong with doing good. Yeah. That put darkness for or or light and or or light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So there's things you can put in your mouth that somebody might tell you, oh, don't taste it. It's, it's real sweet. <laughs> and then you put it in there and your face goes, Ooh. right, right. <laughs> no, it's bitter. Oh, no, no, no. It's sweet. Huh. Well, you understand, you're tasting it. Yeah, yeah, y'all well, wrong, wrong. You tasted the world, mm -hmm. and Yahweh said, "Taste and see me, huh. and, and see the difference." You right. understand, there's a difference. Right. Yes, it the is. The world is bitter. Yes, yeah. it is. But Yahweh is sweet. Yeah. But He said that there is some the, the the Gentile mind thinks that bitter is sweet. They think that good is evil, and they think evil is good. Yeah. Verse twenty one. Verse 21, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. So he said what's going on is they're making up their own rules and regulations mm -hmm. and their society is actually programming them mm -hmm. what to think, yeah. how to be, how to do. That's why you see different people and they, they change the fashion. I was looking at the, a commercial a couple of days ago. Now I see they're letting the women wear some pants and not so tight uh, glued to them. So now they're wanting to, to wear pants a little bit looser, but got like a little uh, um, swing bottom to them. Mm -hmm. So now don't be surprised if you see the people that have been, are being programmed oh, and, yeah. and don't understand they're being programmed that are still in slavery. Uh -huh. Now they're gonna start wearing pants that are looser and got the little swing bottom yeah, to yeah. them. And that's just one way that they're being programmed. Yeah, right, right. It says, like it but woe unto them that are cockam in their own eyes. Know, so right. they think it's all right. Yeah. They think they're just supposed to throw out your clothes um, last season. <laughs> they think they're supposed to be a different color that's in fashion. So then you go, you get that color. They think that whatever top or suit or whatever, and I really hate the way they make men's suits now. <laughs> And they make them too short with the with the jacket. They're to, to me, they're just so ugly. Um, but it says they're wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. So they think what they're doing is right, and they don't know that they're in prison. Right, right. All right, in slavery. Verse twenty-two. Verse twenty-two. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Hallelujah. Verse 23, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So go unto them that are mighty to drink yain. In other words, where they, they got their uh, their bottle with them and they just can't let it go. They get up first thing in the morning. Instead of drinking water or coffee or tea, they got their wine. And Adam of Coat to mingle strong drink. So there's some of them that's taking the straight vodka or whatever it is first thing in the morning. 
<laughs> well, because they're, they're in slavery, they're in prison. They've been programmed by this Gentile mind. Because a whole bunch of commercials coming on every day. Yeah. And showing you how they're having so much fun, drinking right. wine and right. partying and, and drinking this hey, and that. Yeah. And they got these three women that's advertising this, uh, what is it, some kind of wine or something. And, and they got all the sparkly dresses and they look all cute. And the lady got the wine bottle. As she's walking, so this is this is programming yeah, people yeah. to associate. Oh, that's that's living life. Yeah. That's really how life is supposed to be. Right. Day and but night. It's part of that unconscious programming, right? Which you want to be awakened to, so you can get up out of it, and you can put your guard up when they're trying to program you. It says, "Which justify how I right. shall for reward." So what's it about? It's about the buck. It's right. about the 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 money. The Benjamin and take away Hasidic of the Sadiq from him. So they're trying to get people to trade what Yahweh yeah. tell them to yeah. do because they portray everything else as so much fun. Yeah. And, and, and no, you're not really living. No, you're not. No, you're just existing. This is, this is what they're, they're trying to tell you when Yahweh opens your eyes and when Yahweh releases you from prison. They try to tell you, oh no, you're. You're going into slavery. Huh. Oh no, you you being restricted. Oh no, right. you're you're being uh, curtailed. Oh like no, uh -uh. you, you right. can't really have a full life that way. Uh -huh. It said it's trying to take away right. your righteousness from you. Yeah. Go to John yep. ninth chapter. John <clears throat> or Yaqan the ninth chapter. So a Gentile mind does not see wrong and right. Nope. Look right. Look around. They do not see wrong and Look right. Around. Right. They right. see it wrong. Right. John the ninth chapter. And you may still be thinking like a Gentile in some ways. Yeah, yeah. Because it takes time. Yes, it does. And it is a process. Yes, and it, it is. It is a continuous process. Yes, it is. From the time that you meet Yahweh until the time you go and wait for the resurrection. Like for us, we can Those go. of us have met Yahweh at different ages. Yeah, yeah. And just because I met Yahweh at 28 huh. doesn't mean that it's over for me. No. Because I've been in it longer for you. Never, never. If you met Yahweh at, at 50, doesn't mean it's over for you for, for because somebody met Yahweh later in life than you. Right? That has no justification on it at all. Your, your walk with Yahweh is your walk. Yeah. And it's not over until yeah. your eyes close and you wait yeah. for the That's resurrection. Like You're supposed to still be learning. You're supposed to still okay. be coming up out of prison and That's staying right. out of prison. That's Some it. people get out of prison Stay and come back in. Somebody get released from slavery like our forefathers <laughs> after the Civil War. And th their mind, what do they call it, the Stockholm Syndrome, to where their mind was so enslaved, they were at a lot, they didn't know what to do with themselves right. when they got out of prison. That's why Yahweh got to teach you what to do with yes. yourself after you get out of prison. Yes. Because it's pretty comfortable being in prison where you get, what, your three meals a day right. and you get, yeah. you know, and then they have that structured thing for right. you. When Yahweh releases you from slavery, then it can be a little intimidating with him showing you the way to structure yes, your life and set right, your, your right. own tell, tell schedule you. and to, to go with him according to his oh, schedule. Yeah. yeah. And you can want to just go back to that, right. that cell and, and go back to what's comfortable, where somebody else is telling you what to do. Right. You no, know, it's more comfortable with Yahweh telling you what to do. So your Gentile society is still trying to program you. To not let go of that Gentile thinking. John the ninth chapter. Let's read verses one to two. Hallelujah. John chapter Hallelujah. nine. Yeah. So so it's still trying to program you. Yeah. As long as you turn on whatever you turn on. <laughs> All right. As long as you walk outside your door mm -hmm. and everybody doesn't believe in Yahweh, right. it's still trying to program you. Because yep. the devil is using them to let stuff come out, out of their mouth. Yep. Or to let them do something that people that have been taken out of slavery, released from slavery, don't do. Right. So it's still trying to program you. That's why you got to have your guard up. Yeah. John the ninth chapter, verses 1 to 2, and it reads. John chapter 9 and verse 1. And as Yeshua passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Verse 2. And his disciples 
asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? All right, so as Yeshua passed by, he saw Adam that was blind from his birth. So he was born blind. Right. So now his disciples, Amar and him, Amar, Adam, who did Hadam? This Adam or his parents that he was born blind. So the disciples thought that the, the baby could sin from the womb. Right. They're asking, <laughs> well, did the baby sin in the womb right. cause him to be born blind? Yeah. You think that would be something that people would automatically know. Uh -huh. But with a Gentile mind, so they were still coming out of that yeah. slavery mind. So they really, they were sincere. Right, they didn't right. mean any harm right. against the, the baby. Yeah, right, right. But they, they wanted to understand. Go right. to Romans the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. You see, so, so who messed up here? Who, who, who was not, who was against you? Right. Uh, who was against Yahweh, our uh, master? Was it the little baby inside uh. the womb? Or was it the parents that caused him to be born blind? At least they knew that there was, it wasn't normal to be born blind. Right. So that's a good thing. Hallelujah. But they say, well, which one did something wrong right. to make this come on them? Uh -huh. Romans chapter 9, we want to read verse 11. Now Hallelujah. here's Yahweh answering that question about babies in the womb. Okay. Romans the ninth chapter and verse 11. Read Praise him. Romans chapter 9 and verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Elohim according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So now Yahweh's oh, yeah. talking about some, some children. He's referring to uh, Yaakov and Esau, Jacob and Esau. They were still in the womb. But he's letting you know for the disciples asking this question. So this baby was born blind. This man, he, he grew up, he's blind. Did he do something inside his mother's womb? Or did his parents do something to sin? He says, for how bad being yet born, while they're still in the womb, he said, neither having done any good or evil. So he's saying babies can't do good or evil in the womb. Right. Come on, they're in the womb. They're still getting their little bones and their little heart and stuff. Right. How can, but you think that that would be something that people would just know right. automatically, but a Gentile mind programmed that out of them. Yep. They're in slavery to where they think, and now they think that a baby is just a blob of tissue in their mother's womb. Right. So then they can just, uh, it ain't really a human being anyway. Right. He so says, say. not having done any tov or rob, that the purpose of Elohim, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that corrupt. Huh. Go to 1 John, the third chapter. 1 John, the third chapter. So babies cannot sin in the womb. Praise the mighty God. They've not heard the law, nor can they comprehend it. Their brain is still being formed in the womb. In order to commit sin, you got to have some understanding or you got to have been programmed by this right. Gentile society right. and be in darkness right. and not understand what you're doing. Right, right. Like Yeshua said on the cross, Father, forgive them. Right. But they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and then you would look at them like, yeah, well, look, they paid uh, uh, Judas a 30 pieces of silver. And, uh, they planned and plotted against them. Uh -huh. But Yeshua told the truth. He said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what That's they're doing. That's right. So, they really didn't understand the full of what was going on with them, even though they carried out all the, this stuff and had Yahshua nailed on the cross. And actually, it was something Yahweh had planned, but right, he just, right. the, the specifics of it, it was in these people's hearts. Right, right. Yahshua said, forgive them. So babies cannot sin in the womb. First John, the third chapter. And we want to read verse 4. First Hallelujah. John Hallelujah. chapter 3 Hallelujah. and verse 4. Now this is how you can sin. Uh -huh. right, first John chapter 3 and verse 4 reads. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So whosoever committed hata, <coughs> excuse me, because disciples asked. Okay, did the baby inside the womb, did he sin or did his parents sin? He said, whosoever committed sin or hata, transgress or breaks also hatorah or the law. How can the baby break the law? The baby can't even do, the baby's inside the womb. We just saw where Yeshua said, hey, 
the children inside the womb, that means not yet being born, right, right. having done no good or evil. Right. They can't. It says, for hata is the transgression of hatara, or yeah. sin is the breaking of the law. So it's impossible for them to break the law. Go to right. Deuteronomy 23. Hallelujah. It's revelation knowledge. But now, a program gentle mind, we're going to see, has told us that babies have broken a law. <coughs> Before they come out of the womb. Deuteronomy 23. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, a, a programmed Gentile mind is a mind that's in prison, it's enslaved, and it's being told what to think. Right. And the bottom line is the devil is running that's it. The, the Gentiles or the heathen you, you, that, are, that, are, that did program us, but are still trying to program you and I. All right, right, so we can know. Deuteronomy chapter 23, 23, Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 2. Now we're going to look right. at how this, this program, Gentle Mind, has done something to babies that are in the womb. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. All right, so here Yahweh... <coughs> Has, has put this word, or the, the English people translated it over. We're going to see what this Hebrew word is. Translated it over, but now a programmed gentle mind, Gentile mind, has told you a B-A-S-T-A-R-D is a child that's born without the parents being married. Uh -huh. Hasn't it? Am I the only one that, that yeah. understands yeah. that definition? Yeah. Yeah. That's what the a programmed gentle mind told us, right? Mm -hmm. So then, look at me, prime example. I'm a B-A-S-T-R-A to R-D standing before you. Because my parents had me, I think they were maybe about 17 and 18. But they started having babies. They had my older sister, she's three years older than me, when they were 15 and 16. Then they had my older brother a couple of years later. Then they had me one year after him. Then they had my younger brother, let's see, was he one year younger than me or two? Two, all right? But before they hit 20, and then when they hit 20, they got married. Wow. So you looking at me uh -huh. now, the, the world has classified me as a B-A-S-T-A-R-D. Right. right. But now let's see, what does this word actually mean that was put in the Bible? And it's talking about, hey, I'm not supposed to be in the temple. Uh -huh. It said, a B E S T R D oh, A R D shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Even to his tenth generation uh -huh. shall he not enter into the temple of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the devil told me before I was born, look, you cursed. You, you can't even become a believer. Uh -huh. You can't even come to Yahweh. That's what the programming is. All right. All right. Let's read this uh, definition for this B A S T A R D. All right, go ahead. The two English words, a bastard, mm -hmm. or one he Hebrew word, mamzer, found at Strong's Blue Letter Bible, number 4464. Four, four, four. Strong's defined a bastard as from an unused root meaning to alienate a mongrel, for example, born of a Jewish father and a heathen mother. Now, wow. this, this, this definition is a total lie. Part of it. It says a B-A-S-T-A-R-D means to alienate. It means a mongrel. So far, that's good. But now, it says, now it gives you an example. For example, a child is born of a Jewish father mm -hmm. and a heathen mother. That definition is a total lie. That example they gave is a total lie. Uh -huh. There's only two verses in the Old Testament where this same Hebrew word is used and has been translated B-A-S-T-A-R-D. So let's look at them so Yahweh can give us some understanding. Because we've been lied to. Yeah. We've been told that I'm a B-A-S-T-A-R-D because my parents were fooling around as teenagers and didn't get married until all, all right. four of their, their children were born. All right. 
All right? So then Yahweh wanted me to understand that didn't block me from coming to him. He wants you to understand that didn't block you from coming to him. But the devil, the, the slavery mind, right. wanted you to stay in prison, so it wanted that to stop you from coming to Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's look at these other two verses where this word is used. Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Zechariah, the ninth chapter. And so those of us that have had to live with that stigma, <clears throat> and I didn't really have to live with it long because my parents moved from South Carolina, at least my father did, <clears throat> so most people up here didn't know the background. Mm -hmm. Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Well, right. Look at this, right, this yeah. English word B A S T A R D, because the world has lied about what it means. Right, right. Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Let's read verse six. Zechariah, right. chapter nine, and verse six reads. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter nine and verse six. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. And seven. Verse seven. And I will take away his blood out of his mouth, and his abominations from between his teeth. But he that remaineth, even he, shall be for our Elohim, and he shall be as a governor in Yehuda, and Ekron. As a Jeb Jebusite. All right, so Yahweh says the same Hebrew word, um, Mamzer, shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. So he's talking about some, 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 some Hamites. He said, I will take away his dom out of his mouth, and his abominations from between his teeth, but he that remaineth, even he shall be for our Elohim. And he shall be as a governor in Yehuda and Ekron as a Jebusite. Yahweh is talking about adults here. Let's yep. go up in the same chapter to verse 1. Zechariah, the ninth chapter, and verse 1. God. So we can see he is not talking about babies in the womb at all. Zechariah, the ninth chapter, and verse 1. Zechariah, chapter 9, and verse 1. The burden of the word of Yahweh in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof, when the eyes of men and of all the tribes of Israel shall be toward Yahweh. So we see who he was talking about in, in verses 6 to 7. Uh -huh. He said, The burden of Hadabar of Yahweh in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof when the eyes of Adam, as all of the tribes of Israel, shall be toward Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. So he's talking about people with this Gentile mind and got the Gentile mind, but their eyes are not toward Yahweh. That's right, Yahweh, right, right, right. So, so, so Yahweh said Yahweh. this English word is talking about adults. Now mm -hmm. when a Gentile mind defines right. adult, we're going to find out they got a totally different definition. Yahweh yeah. said an adult is a child that has reached the age of 20 right. or older. That's an adult. So let's see what this uh, Brown Driver Briggs says about this, this word, which is the same word, mamzer. It is used only three times in the, in the Old Testament. And see, what, what does Brown Driver Briggs say a B A S T A R D is? Okay, go ahead. Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew and English lexicon defines the Hebrew word mamzer found at Strong's Blue Letter Bible number 4464 for, for a bastard as specifically a child of incest and perhaps figurative collective of mixed population. So here uh -huh. we go with another lie uh -huh. in the uh -huh. definition. <clears throat> That's why with this Gentile mind programming, you cannot just relax and say, okay, well, I'm looking in the concordance. Right. I'm going to the Hebrew. Right, and right. Yahweh gave you the Ruach. You have to listen to what yeah, Yahweh yeah, is telling you. Yes, yes, Yahweh. Because the, the Strongs was half a lie. Right. Now here's this brown driver Briggs. It's a total lie. I know, right? It says a B A S T R A R D is a child of incest. Uh huh. And perhaps figurative collective of mixed population. Right. right. So now right. the word incest is not in the King James Bible. So I looked at Miriam Webster's definition, and did I give you that definition, or should I read it? Yeah, I, I can. Okay. So the, what what does the what do the English people say? Okay. 
incest is. Uh, now, right. this is what the, the contortions is saying. Th this is what a, a, a B A S T A R E right, 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 is. Right. Okay, go ahead. Merriam Webster Dictionary defines incest as the meaning of incest is sexual intercourse between persons so closely related that they are forbidden by law to marry. Mm. Also, the statutory crime of such a relationship. So now, <coughs> Brown Driver Briggs is saying, yes, yeah, it's, it's having relation, it's having you know sex with your cousin or with your your somebody that's of your natural family or with your brother and sister. Yeah. But that's a lie. That's not what this this Hebrew word means. So the English word B-A-S-T-A-R-D does not refer to babies born from fathers and mothers having sex before marriage. It's a Gentile-minded society rejecting Yahweh's word that hurtfully and wrongfully yeah, right. applies this like word to innocent babies in the womb. Uh -huh. Go to Isaiah 49. Tell it like it is, bro, so we can know. It, it is how's the time through society yep. trying to attack the children before they're born. Right, right. Isaiah 49. Praise the mighty God for his revelation knowledge. But he got to release you from prison, so that's you listen it. to what that's he's telling you. Mind, or please. else you, you'll just be thinking, Follow yeah, him on. and you'll be having your nose up in there. Yes, yeah. yeah, he should own my head up, man. Yes, you know, <laughs> they weren't married. And they, oh, my parents were married when they had me. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, so, so what? Right. <laughs> Isaiah 49. <clears throat> we want to read verse 1. Isaiah chapter 49. Hallelujah. And verse 1. Praise so we want to look at what, what Yahweh says. Okay. Always. And for Always. Isaiah 49, verse 1 reads. Isaiah chapter 49, <coughs> verse 1. Listen, O Isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. Yahweh hath called me from the womb. Hallelujah. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. Hallelujah. That's the mighty Yah. So Hallelujah. now you and I can take that verse and apply to us. No matter what our parents were doing yeah, right. or hadn't done. Yeah. It says, listen. And he's talking to the Gentiles, but he's talking to you too. Come to me, Yahweh said, and Shemar ye am from far. So we're we're far from Yerushalayim, but we're close to Yahweh now. Yeah. Yahweh had karah me from the womb. Yeah. My my pregnant parent, my, my parents, you know, they're pregnant as teenagers, but Yahweh called me from the womb. Yeah, right. And now we're going to look at, don't be trying to take that and twist it like that justified my parents. Uh -huh. Right. They justified me. That's right. They were Child just children doing what somebody had instructed him rightfully how not to do. Right, right. And with them not knowing Yahweh, they went to the Sunday church and all that. But, um, Again, there, there's people that think that Yahweh don't have no effect on their lives. I know, right? And, he, and they think it's normal for them not to be involved in their lives. Tell like it is, Ross. He and said, Yahweh have corralled me from the womb. Yep, yep. From the bowels of my M had yes, he made he, mention yes, of he my Shem. Yes, he had. And you can lift that banner up, I regardless know. of how your parents had you. That right. Yahweh calls babies from the womb. Let's go to Jeremiah, the first chapter. That's right. The enemy <coughs> attacks babies in the womb. Yeah. See, Yahweh calls them from the womb. So the enemy starts right there and attacks them in the womb. Tell like it is, bro, so the ants can know. And see, we need to understand because you can be all so nice and so forgiving celebrating somebody that's had a baby under these terms. Uh -huh. But you better recognize what your society is going to do to the child uh -huh. and how society is going to label the innocent baby. So then you can come against that. Yes, how do and you know? can nourish the child and protect the child. Because when the child goes to school, they're going to hear all those names. How do you know? And God. worse. Because yes. children can be cruel. Yeah. They're sweet, they're innocent. But then they can say some real hurtful stuff. Yeah. How do you know? right? Yahweh calls babies from the womb. The enemy attacks babies yes. in the womb. Yes. Jeremiah, the first chapter, we want, we want to read verses 4 to 5. Praise on. Jeremiah, the Praise first on. chapter, Praise and on. verses 4 to 5. Reads Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4. Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified yes. thee. 
and I ordain thee a prophet unto Hallelujah. the nations. Now see, as Yahweh's people, we, we got to take these scriptures and apply them to That's us. That's they are. We got to understand a Gentile mind will tell you, well, see, that's only talking about Jeremiah. <laughs> well, see, that's only talking about Isaiah. That's not really talking about me. That's your slave mind talking. That's the mind that Yahweh is, is, is Trying to get getting rid of. up out that's of you. That's getting rid of. He said, Then Hadabar of Yahweh came unto me, Amar, before I formed thee in the womb. Yeah. <coughs> He's saying, Before your parents even I came together. Right. That's right. Before my parents even came together. Yes. Now, the reason they came together and the timing they came together was wrong. Yep. And it's still wrong. Yeah, right, right. But the result of me and you, whoever yeah. is in this situation, All right. All right. It's not wrong. That's it. Yahweh says he, he turns things and works it out for his purpose and for his good. Right, right. So that taught me don't be having no babies out of wedlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the mighty God. Because I know what I went through. Hallelujah. It says, before I formed thee in the belly, Hallelujah. before your parents even came together, you and I, yeah. I yada thee, the one that was going to stand up for yeah. me. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I That's had right. your life all planned out. That's right. You know and I ordained me a Nabi right. unto Hagoi. Yahweh did it. Go to Luke, the second chapter. Not man. There you go. Yahweh did it. We know school. <coughs> Luke, the second chapter. And don't you dare stand up talking about, see, Yahweh said I had you, Micaiah had the cor uh, <coughs> correct a sister. Years ago, at another temple, after she she went and been in the truth all her life. Uh -huh. Now you know when when you come into the truth at a certain point, right. your family might only know the natural side. Yep, yep. But she knew enough naturalness not to be going and having no child without being married. Right, right. And then uh, here she come busting up in the temple. All of a sudden, you see that she's she's uh -huh. uh, pregnant. And then after she had the baby, of course, we welcomed her and, and right. loved on her. Right, right. But then after she had the baby, she going to stand up in the temple and say something about what a blessing uh, the child was from Yahweh and, huh. and, and kind of trying to insinuate the circumstances right. of, the, of the birth were blessed. Right. And Micaiah just looked her straight in the, at the face and said, look, sister, it wasn't no blessing for you to have that child out of wedlock. Right. And you and your, your baby are not a family. Now, when you get a husband, you'll be you'll be working on the family. Uh -huh. He just told her straight right, up. Right. She didn't like it, but he just that's, came right to her. That's what I got. Because you don't come up do. in the temple acting like you're still in prison. Uh -huh. You don't come up in the temple acting like Yahweh has changed his standards. Uh -huh. and, and so, Micaiah did. He told her in love, but he didn't right. tell her. Be proof and correct. Turn to second chapter, and let's read verse 20. Three. Luke chapter 2 verse See, because with these Gentile minds around you, the world get to thinking that when they come up in the temple, it's going to be the same as they're out yeah, in the world. Yeah, right, right, the world right. get to thinking when they come encounter me and you, because it's, it's so much pressure from, from them calling good evil and evil right, right. good, they think, oh, okay, the Ten Commandments, oh, they threw them out. Huh. Okay, so then, what do y'all think should be right? Huh. Right? So, right, so, right. so, so what, do you, what do you think the commandments should be? I know, right? Should Yahweh change because he, he, he put this standard that's too hard? For, it ain't too hard. No, it's not too hard. It ain't too hard. And and uh, I had to um, kind of, you know, apologize and hug up on, on um, somebody because... Whenever I hear somebody say something is too hard, huh. and they know Yahweh, I know, right? That that's that's uh, something to where it kind of sends me to the moon. Hey, that's, that's right. That's because I'm gonna, because I understand if I tell myself something is too hard, huh. that makes it harder for me. Yep. That's the devil coming out of my mouth. Yahweh said nothing is impossible for me. Right. Yahweh said nothing is too hard for me. Yeah, right, right. So I just got to shut my mouth. Don't care how this flesh is, is aching yeah. or trying to tell me something is too hard. Right. Because if I don't shut my mouth, Yahweh going to send somebody to shut it for me. I know, right. And, and it's going to be 
more painful than yes, what sir. I think is too hard. Yeah, right, right. And I don't want that. Tell like this so we can know. Luke chapter 2 and verse 23. Praise him. Luke chapter 2 and verse 23. As it is written in the law of Yahweh, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to Yahweh. Uh -huh. Now, so uh -huh. here Yahweh is letting you know. All right. And he's letting you know you can specifically apply it. I know you can apply it to males. Right. Yeah, I know that. Male babies in the womb. He said, as it is written in HaTorah of Yahweh. This is the law. Uh -huh. Every man child, man baby that opens the womb. Now, opens the womb means when they come out. That's right, birth. And we just saw these these two men of Yahweh saying, hey, when I was inside my mother, right. before I came out. Yep, yep. The Gentile mind told you before the babies came out, huh. they low down and dirty, they B E S T A R D S. They're the dregs of society. Tell it like it is, right? Then a Gentile mind will try to clean that up in their own way. Right. And try to make it like it's not a sin, the circumstances of the birth. <clears throat> That's not the way to clean it up. Yahweh already got it clean. Right. Understand that that child that didn't apply to that child that anyway. Right? That's innocent child. But truth will override whatever circumstances. That's it. That's the sin. truth. That's the only the way. You, that's the only way I could get up out of that the curse. Of it. The truth. He said, the Torah says, every man child that comes out of the womb uh -huh. shall be karah kadash to Yahweh. Yahweh. Shall be dedicated to that's Yahweh. Why. That's why in, in our Hebrew culture, he said at eight days old, every man child circumcised. All right. That's to remind this man child, right. even if you train him in the right way and he grows up, uh -huh. all he had to do is look down and see, wait right. a minute, my parents dedicated me to Yahweh. That's right, that's it. That's to help to remind him. Yeah. And that brings to mind, let's go to um, Galatians first chapter. Micaiah and I, <clears throat> because of a, a situation that I went through, and, and Yahweh's going to bring it up later. Right, to my young. Uh, Micaiah and I went to adopt a, uh, a male baby. There was a situation at a company I was working at, and one of their relatives um, had had a child, and she was uh, single. And some kind of way, I guess because she was heavy, her uh, grandparents didn't even realize she was pregnant. Right, she right. was pregnant and had right. a child, right. <laughs> and then told her uh, sister-in-law she was going to leave the child at the hospital, then her sister-in-law knew uh, that Micaiah and I were, were trying to have a child. And she talked to me and said, well, we adopt the, the, the baby boy. We said, oh, sure. So uh, we went and, and uh, got the little baby boy. And um, we named him Hananiah. And we had him <coughs> for a couple of weeks. And the first thing we did during those couple of weeks, we saw the baby wasn't circumcised. And Yahweh told Micaiah and me, we went up to this hospital that's up here, it's no longer up there on Clark Street. <clears throat> and we got the, the baby circumcised. Yeah, praise the mighty God. So what happened was the, the young lady had regrets and started, you know, uh, feeling bad. And, and she talked to her uh, sister-in-law, her sister-in-law talked to me. And by that time, you know, we had fell in love with the little baby. But it was like we realized, you know what? He was given to us for us to circumcise. Hallelujah. Mm. And so we gave the baby back. Praise to my God. Praise Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But so uh, <clears throat> we're going to uh, Galatians, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. So Hallelujah. babies are not aware. So no. Yahweh, we keep seeing how Yahweh says they're holy to him and, yep. and they're innocent. They right. haven't done good or evil. That's it. Babies are not aware of the circumstances surrounding their birth. That's right. Until they grow up and get a little older. Yeah. And then you may have some family members that are hurtful. Yeah. So so maybe yeah. you know maybe the parents uh, were married and had them, and now you you come along. Yeah. And be sure now, if you're not serving Yahweh or you're not serving Him right, you have served Him. Right. Them children gonna tell the baby, well look, at least I had a mama and a daddy. Uh -huh. Yeah. They gonna they gonna tell that yeah. child. Yeah. But so this is why Yahweh wants you to have the truth. So you can repair that damage. Yes. Do net damage control. That's it. See, the damage control was supposed to be done before my father and mother came right, together. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right, right. But it wasn't. Right so now you got to clean up after. Yes. So Yahweh says, you know what? 
If you can't clean up before, I'm gonna help you clean up after. That's God, how that's God. how good he is. That's how much he loves us. So, but holding babies accountable for for what a boy, girl, adult man, right. and woman do right, right, right. is pure wickedness. Right. <clears throat> how you gonna hold the child accountable for some boy or girl? Right. Like my father and mother right. were boys and girl. Teenage. Or a man or woman do. Wrong folk. That Don't is try. pure. Wickedness. From the devil. That is pure evil. From the devil. Galatians, the first chapter. And let's read verse 15. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter Hallelujah. And verse 15. Read. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15. But when it pleased Elohim, who separated me from my mother's womb Hallelujah. and called me by his grace. Yes. So you see how Yahweh, yes. he's, he's focused on the womb and even before our parents came together. Yep, yep, yep. He said, I called you. Now, if you didn't know it, uh, Yahweh had planned everything before he even created anything. That's right. He's already done. He knew how some time was going to mess up the, the earth and he was going to yep. have to replenish it and redo it. Yep. Again. Mm -hmm. He knew you were going to be born in what family. He, he already did that. Right. It ain't like he said, okay, so now for the children that are going to be born in, in, in whatever year you were born in. Okay, so now this is this is what I want to do. No, yeah, we already got that all planned out. All right. Crazy. We're always the ones that have to catch up. That's it. Tell it like it is, Rob. But we want to catch up. Yes, we do. But we want to understand the truth so then how we can remedy and, and hurt now and heal people this that world, are hurting this world. from stuff we did. Of this world. When it pleased Elohim, who separated me from my right, right, right. Him womb and corralled me by his hand. Uh -huh. Go to Luke, the first chapter. So Praise only a programmed Gentile mind puts this name, B-A-S-T-A-R-D, on babies. Luke, the first chapter. Praise him. Crippling them before they enter the world. I know, right? Now, Yahshua was accursed before he entered the world as a baby. Because to a Gentile mind, he came up under this B-A-S-T-A-R-D circumstances. Gentile mind said Yahshua brought shame on his family. Huh. When his mother got pregnant with him before she married. Right, right. And I remember years ago, I've told you this before, I ran across some Hebrew brothers that were still in the natural uh, stage. And we got to talking about the, uh, the birth, the way the circumstances of Yahshua's birth. And both these brothers laughed uh, in my face. Tell me, you believe that? Yeah. Hey, there ain't no woman that had no baby without a yeah, mother. Know, right. That's a man being a sister. You can't believe that. Huh. And I just, I didn't say nothing. I just said, okay. Right. What is it? Uh, memo to self. Right. Don't say nothing to these brothers, no. That's right. <laughs> they don't understand this spiritual side. I know, right? I mean, even in the Sunday church, I believe that. I knew that was true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Luke, the first chapter. But a Gentile mind says Yeshua brought shame on his family uh -huh. when his mother got pregnant before she was married. Luke 1, verses 26 to 33. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from Elohim unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Verse 27, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Yosef of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Miriam. All right, bless the mighty God for his word. <clears throat> so we, we're reading the circumstances of Yahshua's birth. All right. And it says, here's this, this Moloch that came to this uh, virgin, and a virgin means that she had not had, like all of us uh, children are born into the world, girl children and boy children, had not had relations, sexual relations, is, with the opposite sex all right. or with any perverts. <laughs> all right, for those that, you know, dealing with the, the, the devil has twisted their mind so much. To a virgin, she was engaged to a man whose name was Yasa. And he was uh, the house of Dawid. So these are Hebrews. He just yeah, let yeah. you know these yeah, are right. Hebrews. Like it is, right. and, and the virgin's name was Miriam. All right. So so she was pure. Uh -huh. Okay. Verse 28. Verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. Yahweh is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women. Huh. Verse 29. And when he saw and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Miriam, for thou hast found favor with Elohim. All right, praise Yahweh for his word. Uh -huh. So here, here's the Malach, he's coming and, and telling Mary, hey, Shalom, right. you're highly favored. Right. Yahweh is with you, but rack art thou among Isha. And then she said, okay, what kind of Shalom is this? I, know, I don't right. understand this. But you see how we can tell she was hooked up with Yahweh. She's a believer. She was keeping Yahweh's law, statutes, and commandments. Right, and right, she's just right. saying, okay, what, what kind of shalom is this? I, know, I don't right. understand this. And then the Malak, he said to her, okay, don't don't be afraid. Don't, you know, just calm down, Mary. Right. Uh, Miriam, for you found Kabod favor with Yahweh. So right, I'm right. coming for a good reason. Right, right. All right, verse 31. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Yahshua. Verse 32. And he... He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And Yahweh Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Yaakov forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Uh, so yeah. then uh, uh, Yahweh yeah. told him all like to explain to Mary. Right. First uh, the angel said, okay, just calm down, Mary. Right. Now. Right. It's not a bad thing, reason I came to you. Uh, yeah. Oh, you shall conceive in your womb. You're going to get pregnant. Right, right. And you're going to have a son and call his name Yahshua. He said, now, he's the Savior. He's going to be great. Right. He'll be called the son of El Elyon and Yahweh Elohim will give unto him the throne of his father Dawid. So Miriam knew the scriptures. Right. Why? Because she's a believer. Right. She knew the Old Testament. Right. It's just she didn't realize she was going to be the one yeah, that was going to have Yahshua. Right, yeah. It says, and this baby that you're going to have shall reign over the bite of Yaakov forever, and of yes. his mouth there shall be no end. Right. So we're going to see, see later where she accepted what the Malach was yes. telling her because she understood the scriptures. All right. Go to Genesis the 38th chapter. But now Yahshua's mother did not intend to have children until she got married. Right. Genesis 38. She knew having sex before marriage was unacceptable to Yahweh. Right, right. Unacceptable to her society. Yeah, right. And unacceptable to her fiance. Yeah, right. Matter of fact, and this is not a Gentile mind. Yahweh has labeled those men and women that have sex before marriage huh. of playing the whore. Yeah. And really, he puts it on the woman. Yeah. But Mary knew this. Yeah. Genesis 38 and verse 24. Hallelujah. And it reads. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 28, 30. 30. I'm sorry. G Genesis chapter 38 and verse 24. And, and it came to pass about three months after that it was told Yehuda, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, hath played the harlot, uh -huh. and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Yehuda said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. Uh -huh. Whoa! <laughs> See? Uh -huh. this, this was the law. That's right. You, yep. And then, if she had played the whore once they found out the circumstances, uh -huh. but it was just like the way she went about it was like a whore. Right. It said, and it came to pass about three months after that it was told Yehuda, Amar, Tamar, thy daughter in Torah had played the harlot. She done played the whore. Right, See, right. a Gentile mind has, has defined the whore. Right. As standing on the street corner, right. or as a pretty woman in in, right. in, in Hollywood, yeah. so they got a whole different definition right. from Yahweh's. It said she played the harlot, and also she's pregnant right. by whoredom, right? Because she was not married; her right. husband had died. Yeah, right, right. So we can know. So now we're looking at what Yahweh says. Right. That's why you you got people that that want the pressure from society to leak over into the temple huh. and then want us to change what Yahweh said. I know, right? Now. We can change what Yahweh said all we want. Huh. The bottom line is, 
Yahweh the judge, Yahshua right. the judge. That's it. You still being judged by what he said in here. All right, all right, right. Tell that again. But so he helps those of us yes. that didn't listen or or didn't know how to counsel right. the people that we're around. Tell that again, right. So that then the truth will help them to heal yes. from what they've done. You can't That's change it. the past. That's it. But you can change the future by obeying That's Yahweh God in God spirit God. and in yes. truth. That's it. And yeah. not doing what you used to do. That it. And Yehuda said, well, wait a minute, she she been out here huh. uh, 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 having sex and not married, and she's pregnant too. Huh. Bring her out. We're going to burn her. Huh. So Mary knew she was going to be called a whore. Right. By her society. And this was the righteous Hebrew society. Right, right. Deuteronomy 22nd chapter. Praise the mighty God. So now my family circumstances, I ended up in the same situation that my mother and father had been in. And when I was 19, uh, 18, I went off to, to college. And then I'm having sex without being married. Right, right, right. And then I ended up playing the whore. Right. And got pregnant. Right. And then there was a, a, a young guy who was a graduate student, I forget what country he's from, but he advised me to go and tell, um, you know, call my parents because I was afraid to tell them. And so then I finally called my father and told him, and he said, okay, come home. So what happened was he arranged with his older brother to take me somewhere in Chicago to get an abortion. Huh. But so you see how... Right. But again, now, we're going to get to the point where I was 19. Right. So I was not the legal age. Right. 20 was a legal age. Yahweh forgave me for that. Yes, he has. But that was wrong, but I was a child. Right. Didn't know. So, so my parents dropped the ball. Right. And then we're going to find out, like, the circumstances to where here, here, Miriam is a virgin. Right. Going to find out the circumstances where... Uh, mothers and fathers sitting down and discussing yep. with little boys and girls about virginity. That's right. Hallelujah. That wasn't done either. That's anymore. it. And we know that. And I'm also about that.